Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on the Road Builder YouTube channel. Today, we're going to go over the best render settings and lighting techniques for your Roblox renders. Now, a few days ago, this starter rigs pack got released with a bunch of different rigs that you can use. And uh, if you want to see how to use that, I did make a video a few days ago. And it goes over how to set up each of the rigs and put your avatar stuff on them and make it so you could basically move your avatar all around and all your accessories follow you. And I said if that video got a certain amount of likes, we would do this one and uh y'all crushed it so here we go for starters i did ask one of the best gfx designers i know what he would recommend for people to start out with and what his best render settings would be this guy his name is soft gb and he has been doing this for a while as you can see five years of experience a bloxy award nominee i mean this guy knows his stuff he's very talented when it comes to gfx uh and he was one of the people who helped make the rigs as well but yeah i mean just incredible stuff so taking into consideration everything he's told me i'm gonna tell it all to you guys also if you want to get these rigs they're completely free and the link will be down below in the description first things first we want to set up gpu rendering if it works on your computer it'll make your render speeds way faster and uh just a good little setting to turn on so we're gonna go to edit preferences system click on optics right here and here's our two option mine is already on this geforce rtx 3090 is the gpu and then this uh, is the CPU. If you can do GPU ed rendering, it'll help you a lot with these speeds. Also, just just for my, I'm gonna I'm turn those up. That that has nothing to do with rendering, but I control Z all the time. Now I do want to mention some systems will use this, and some systems will use this. Uh, either is fine. Just pick whatever works better for you. Now let's get into the actual render properties. Right over here, if we go right to this guy, we have a few options. Up first is the rendering engine. There's Cycles, Workbench, and Eevee. Cycles is better for like realistic renders. It uses ray tracing and all that stuff, but Eevee is completely okay as well. So I guess it's up to you. If you're going more realistic, I would use Cycles. If realism isn't something you're really going for, I would use Eevee. But both work pretty fine. Now I'm going to go on Cycles, and if we go right down here, we want to change this to GPU Compute. This could stay unsupported. Now we have Samples, guys. These will directly in infect. That's definitely not the right word impact your rendering times at the uh, i'm gonna put mine at 2000 that is what soft gb uses as well but he also said anything over 1000 is completely unnecessary unless your scene is super super complicated uh if you don't have a higher end pc uh yeah i would i would be at a thousand uh that that's kind of the top line that you need to be at but if you are on a lower end pc you could bring that down a little bit um yeah i guess that's just trial and error i'm gonna use 2000 soft gb uses 2000 but he also said 1000 is uh is the highest you really gotta go we're gonna set that in the render one as well to 2000 now guys make sure to have noise threshold checked on that will also help with your render times i don't know the ins and outs of it but basically it won't render samples if it doesn't need to that might be dumb but i think that's how it works anyways check it on that is a good thing to have and then in this denoise tab we're gonna open that up and all of the settings that mine is currently on uh that's that's where to go so yours is probably set up like this i don't think i changed them just make sure you have that box checked as well now that is our render settings themselves let's go into our next little settings tab right here i have mine on png and there is one more thing we forgot in the render settings most of the time i put mine on transparent so you're gonna want to come down to film and then check this transparent box right here just so you'll have a transparent background and you can do more in post whether that's photoshop photo p gimp paint.net whatever you use after your render is done now getting into lighting you can do this all manually with point lights area lights sun lights like all that stuff and set them up uh perfect for you but since this is more of a beginner tutorial, uh, HDRIs, these things are awesome. They light the whole scene and they're free. So head over to Polyhaven and go to the HDRIs tab and then just find one you like. If you want your scene outside, you could pick an outside one. If you have sort of a, I guess this would be a good example, a burnt warehouse for like a rundown scene. These will directly impact the lighting on your avatar or whatever you're rendering out. So if you were rendering a building from your game, I probably wouldn't put the building inside a building to render it. Now I'm gonna look for a nice studio lighting. This, this is actually, yeah. <laughs> this looks fine to me. And I'm gonna just hit download. And we're downloading it right down here. You guys can't see it because my webcam's in the way. 
Now we gotta put that HDRI into Blender. We're gonna go over to our shading tab. This would probably be on object for you. So you'll wanna click on here and click world and you will get these two little nodes. Then we're gonna do shift A and search an environment texture right here. Let's just drop that right there. Connect the color to the color. And now we need to open the HDRI from wherever we downloaded it on our computer. Mine is right here. Now if we switch this into our rendered view, you will see the lighting effects. It is going to take a little second. As you can see, there's light coming from behind me, giving us this cool little rim light effect. If we switch to the back, it's fully lit. If we switch to the front, it is shadows. And uh, there's a couple ways we could change this around. First things first, we could just rotate our, our whole rig uh, and then face it the other way. I don't really think that's the best way to do this. We're going to add a couple more nodes right down here. So we're going to do shift A and we're going to add a mapping node. Perfect. We're going to put that right there. And then we're going to add one more texture coordinate yes a texture coordinate node and we're gonna put that right there then we're gonna connect generated to vector and then vector to vector and now if we want the light to be in the front of our character obviously it's in the back right now so we could just change our rotation on the z coordinates and we'll just do 180 degrees, which will flip it to the front of our avatar. Now, as you can see, we have light in the front and no light in the back. However, I wouldn't really recommend doing light directly on a subject. It kind of makes it seem more flat and there's no like depth to your image. So I would turn this a little bit either to this side or this side, similar to how my face cam is. This side of my face is a bit shadowed. This side is lit. Just adds a little more depth to the image. And you can just play with this however you want. Let's put it at like 160. Not really enough. Enough. Let's just try a hundred and as you can see we have light coming through this side I guess that's backwards for you, but you can see what I'm talking about. That's pretty cool Now we can take this one step further Let's make some space in between these nodes right here and disconnect this and let's add another node called color ramp Now we will connect color to this FAC and then connect color to color and now you can change the lighting of this scene So instead of having a white light coming to the side of us say we were next to a portal or something we could change this to let's say like a purple light or let's go red because it's the most dramatic i feel so now we have a red light on our scene which is very cool depending what you're trying to render using a color map could definitely help you out but for this one we're just going to keep it white so i'll delete the color ramp and then just bring color back to color but i thought that would be a helpful tip for you guys now let's jump out of the shading tab since it makes most of us uncomfortable and go back to our layout hd HDRI is usually good enough lighting for your scenes, but if you want to make them a bit more interesting, let's switch this over to our object mode and let's add in a light. Shift A, go to lights, and you could pick whatever you'd like. I'm going to use an area light. So we'll just bring that in area and then we could put it however we want. For this one, I'm going to put it right in the back. We're going to scale it up to be like the whole size of the avatar. And then we can just mess with the power and the size. I put it up to a thousand watts and let's go back into our rendered view. Now, as you can see, there's a lot more of that rim light effect, but we still have the lighting from our HDRIs. Very, very cool. Now I'm going to move this light up just a little bit and we're going to get a little more creative with this thing. Let's move it like over here. So it's mainly on this side of the avatar and let's go back into our material view and do a quick little pose. All right, guys. So I did this quick little running pose. If you don't know how to use the rig or pose it, go ahead and check out that last video I posted on this subject as a bright green thumbnail. You can't miss it. Anyway, all that's left to do is add a camera into our scene. So let's go back into object mode, shift A and add in a camera. And then we'll just position this camera. Now setting up the camera is pretty simple. Say we want it to right here. Usually you want it on the opposing side of the back light. And then you just want to do control alt and zero on your number pad. If you don't have a number pad, go into your edit preferences, go to input and make sure emulate numpad is on. This makes your top number numbers the same as using a numpad. But now our camera's where it needs to be, our render settings are set up, and our lighting is done. All that's left is press F12 on your keyboard and let it render. Look at it, man. It's immaculate. Now, as you can see, this is super crispy and super clean already, and it is done. There's always more that you can add. This is the 
kind of fundamental starter basics. If you wanted to add more harsher lights, that would help a lot. If you wanted uh, some of your settings, actually, guys. Let's just click on, let's say, the torso. Go into our materials, and we can mess with all of this stuff, too. If we brought our specular all the way up to one, and we rendered this again, it would be a lot more, like, glossy and shiny. One more thing you want to do, roughness, drop that down. If you want specular up, uh, they kind of work together and against each other. But as you can see now, we have, like, this weird uh, uh, plastic figure look which is pretty cool for like toy renders but guys i do think that is gonna wrap up the video for today if you did enjoy and you want to see more content like this please make sure to like comment and subscribe have a great day later